Her case has always been that she was deceived, exploited, uh, her position of vulnerability was exploited and it was an abuse of trust. Unfortunately, the mandatory drug laws were applied in Indonesia and she spent several years waiting to find out her fate, which eventually was that she was due to be shot in April of this year. Um, so the, the issues that we had to tackle was the intersection between mandatory drug laws in Indonesia and frankly very progressive laws in Indonesia that deal with the protection of human trafficking victims which didn't appear to have been applied. She was due to face the firing squad with the two Australians but she was granted what really was a last minute reprieve. What yeah. prompted that decision? Um, well, the National Union of People's Lawyers came on board for her family on the 7th of April, so only 20 days before she was due to be shot. By a series of uh, what you might call fortunate events, they got hold of me. Um, I'd been researching human trafficking law for quite some time and appearing in human trafficking cases in London, um, and I work in both London and Darwin and I was able to provide them with information on the human trafficking referral mechanisms and the law on human trafficking globally in Indonesia. They made real use of that together with a campaign group called Magranti International. There was a petition. The people of Indonesia came out into the street uh, and eventually the two presidents spoke at an ASEAN conference and she was given that that last minute reprieve to enable a full investigation into the history of her case. And the woman accused of setting Mary Jane up is herself facing court in the Philippines, which of course will be critical now as to where Mary Jane ends up. Yes, well that's how it works really. Uh, it's a new way of defending people that effectively you engage with the authorities, you explain how she became a trafficked victim and then the authorities should be duty bound to investigate that and that her immediate recruiters um, are under investigation. There may well be many, many more people further up the ladder. There are really layers and layers of exploited people before you get to the organised criminals. But that's why human trafficking law is so useful, because the idea is that it should enable you to identify the people at the top of the chain who are the people who really ought to be prosecuted, not the cannon fodder, if you like. And as things stand, is Mary Jane Veloso still on death row, Felicity? Well, she has a temporary reprieve, so the direct answer to that question is no, but obviously it's not permanent. Uh, so we're hoping that the President of Indonesia can see the advantage for Indonesia to lead the way in uh, applying their own human trafficking law that can set a precedent across ASEAN uh, and, and frankly, globally. Lots of pressure applied, of course, on the President from Australia regarding the two Australians. He adopted, a, as we know, a fairly hard line in the end there too. Yes, well, I can't talk about their cases. I wasn't involved in their cases, but clearly he saw uh, the force in the argument that her case really needed to be investigated again. Um, the law on human trafficking in Indonesia comes from the Office for the Empowerment of Women. He's got more women in his cabinet than ever before in Indonesia and possibly more than anywhere else in the world. I don't know the exact statistics. So it's really in his interests to make sure that um, very vulnerable, exploited, poverty-stricken people like Mary Jane Veloso are protected rather than prosecuted.